Hello everyone, this is Eddie Speed, founder of Note School, and today we are honored to have our director, director of curriculum, Mr. Kevin Shortail. Kevin, welcome. Well, thank you very much, Eddie, and uh, good to speak with everybody. It's always a pleasure. So one of the things, Kevin, that you and I get to have a lot of fun with is, is uh, kind of turning the light bulb on and showing people stuff that, uh, that the, the common marketplace doesn't always see or doesn't quite know exists or doesn't quite know what the detail of it exists. And one of the really fun things that I like telling about, and I know you do too, Kevin, is about this government program <laughs> – government program that gives people in certain states, and you'll see them there in green, hardest hit fun states, and it gives them money uh, to either help bring their delinquent loan current or helps them pay down a loan uh, if they owe more than the property's worth. And Kevin, I'm going to let you do more of a drill down on that in a minute. But uh, so what happened to just to give you a little history before Kevin gets in in, in uh, specifics of the programs today in the different states. But what happens is in in 2008 uh, they developed this program called Hardest Hit Funds, and it was the 18 hardest hit states from the mortgage debacle. And uh, they put out the government, uh, the federal government put out about eight and a half billion dollars and gave it to these 18 states. And they kind of separated depending on how, you know, the economy in that state. So it wasn't all exactly divided by 18, but they got different amounts of money. And what really happened was the, the, the government said, you guys administer your own program, and this is to help people that have been stung by the mortgage debacle, the, the real estate crisis that was a result of, you know, the the uh, the, the mortgage subprime lending uh, whole scenario, and uh, now Kevin, we're way down the road in this program. The states haven't spent their money. Yeah, and that's becoming a a big issue because any money that remains unspent. By December 2017, has to go back to the Treasury, has to go back to the federal government. Now, uh, I'm not a politician, and I know you're not one, but I can't imagine being a politician who wants to be known as that politician who let $100 million go back to the federal government when they could have spent it <laughs> to help their citizens. <laughs> I don't think that bodes well for re-election campaigns. So there has been this big push because it was federal money. And I'm just going to tweak your numbers just a little bit. There was uh, technically $7.6 billion set aside in these states in 2010. So they had a period of time, about seven years, to spend this money. And as you can imagine, the, the federal money went to the state, and then the state had to come up with their own – a governing body, if you will, that sees the distribution and creates the programs that are better tailored for that individual state. Well, the state didn't do a good job of getting these funds out to people. In fact, a lot of people ended up leaving their homes because they couldn't get these. You know, it's, it's, it's typical of government programs, which is they have a good intention, but the very people who need these programs, they just don't know about them. They just don't know about them. And Eddie, you've seen the reaction we've had in class when we start talking about this particular program. I mean, you just see the, the, the jaws just start to drop, you know, and they're going, whoa, this is amazing. This is a game changer. And it's like, yeah, it's been around a long time. It's just the people who need it don't know about it. In fact, all of you who are in our class didn't know about it, you know. So it's interesting to see how that, that uh, works. But the program – has evolved. And you're right, Eddie, I do a, a lot of research on this, so, so I'll kind of lead the way through this one. The, the program has evolved. Initially, the program was set up, which it's still set up today, to catch people up on their mortgage payments and even make their mortgage payment on their behalf for up to five years in some states, by the way. And then it matured a little bit where they just didn't get the funds out there enough where some people had abandoned the, these homes. Uh, so they have programs to help with that. They now have down payment assistance programs. But the interesting one here that has come around again recently 
it's been added to the this hardest hit fund program in several states, really, Eddie, because they have to spend this money. And under their current programs, they can't do it. So they are making amendments to their agreement with the Treasury Department. And a handful of states are helping people who are making their payments, but owe more than their uh, owe, uh, owe more in debt than their property is worth. Okay, they're upside down or underwater, depending upon what you you want to call it. So what they have done is a handful of these states have added what's known as the hardest hit fund principal reduction. So this pertains to the performing notes. These are people. So it's not just for defaulted notes. Right. It, it used to be just defaulted notes. But once again, they ran into this situation where, hey, we've got a deadline here. We've got to spend this money. Let's add additional programs. And this is one of the additional programs. And very few people uh, know about that. Even people who've heard of as of uh, hardest hit funds aren't familiar with this program simply because they're thinking, oh, it's just for defaulted paper. You know, Kevin, I was doing uh, the state of the industry a couple of years ago at uh, Ohio RIA. And, of course, it's all the real estate investment associations in Ohio. They come together. There's probably 800 people in the room, very sharp people, and we've had a lot of uh, great experience with uh, people that we've worked with from Ohio. So certainly a, a sophisticated audience, mm -hmm. you know, and it related to real estate investing. And Ohio is one of the states, so it's in the hardest hit fund. So I'm in a room with 800 real estate investors. There were mortgage people, there were bankers, there were real estate investors. In other words, they're in the space, right? Right. And I was doing that that audience, and I asked them, I said, would you please raise your hand if you are familiar with hardest hit funds? 800 people in the room, about 12 people raised their hand. Wow. And and I've done speaking engagements, as you have, Kevin, around the country a lot, and that's just – that's how under-recognized the whole program is. And I laugh and tell people, so do you mean, Kevin, that I could buy a note that – at a deep discount and hardest hit funds gives me enough money – to pay for the note, and I would still collect payments over time for the borrower in addition to that? Oh, yeah. And we, the answer is what? Yeah, we've got examples where not only did it pay for the note, <laughs> it paid them twice what they paid for the note, and then their monthly payments were guaranteed by the state. <laughs> All right, so this sounds like something I want to know more about, Kevin. Yeah, so this one is a, t puts a different turn on it once again. Uh, the, the, the program initially set up uh, to help people stay in their homes, right, and make their payments for them. But now with these added addendums, the principal reduction has come into play in uh, more and more states uh, this past year. So uh, as you know, I happen to live in one. So I live in Florida. So here's an example of a typical Florida home and uh, property value $74,000, but they owe $116,000. Now, depending upon where you are in the country listening to this, Florida, again, being one of the hardest hit fund states, we saw our property values just go up and up and up and then come crashing down where many people lost over 50% of the value. So this is a, a, a very real scenario in Florida that's continuing where people are, they're stuck. They can't afford even to move because of what they owe, but they don't want to go through foreclosure and everything. So they're still making their payments, but the odds of them ever being able to pay that property back down uh, to what it's worth, it just, it's so far down the road, it's hard for them to even imagine. So with this new uh, hardest hit fund principal reduction, the government will step in, work with the lender, okay, which is going to be the note holder. So if, if I bought this note in, in Florida, I'm the note holder here. They would work with me to see if I would be willing to take a lump sum money uh, now, lump sum amount of money now to reduce that principal balance down to what the property's worth. And you'll see it's an easy, uh, easy decision here in this example. So just in this example here, the person owes forty two thousand dollars more than what the property is worth. All right. right. So 
buying the note uh, for $59,200. That's what we would be purchasing this. Again, this is a performing a note, and, and we're looking at this as it relates to the overall value of the property. So we're, we're coming in at $59,200 for this one. So the scenario looks like this. I paid $59,200 for the note. They owe $116,000. So we're going to work with the state of Florida. There's a very simple application, and Eddie, it's a one-page application on this. It's, it's a really wow. – look, they, they have to spend this money. They will spend this money. Once again, people just have to know that it's out there. So you approach the people either through yourself or probably more through your servicing company, right? Your servicing company contacts yeah. them and essentially says, hey, would you like to have your principal balance reduced from 116000 down to $74,000 and it won't cost you anything. I don't, I don't think <laughs> they're you, like, hello. <laughs> yeah, they're like, yeah, it's, you know, you're not going to be turned down. So there's forms and there's uh, um, uh, marketing material, all of which are available for free online uh, to anybody. So, you know, you just get this material in front of those folks so they can see it's legitimate. It's coming from the state and they can verify everything. They can apply for this over the phone. They can do it by email. It's very, very simple uh, streamlined process today. And Florida will pay up to $50,000 to have somebody reduce that principal down. Now, in this case, they're only $42,000. So Florida's not going to give us 50 in this case. They'll give us up to 50. So in our case, what happens is uh, there's an application to Florida. The approval process takes about 90 days. Uh, it's, it's a, again, pretty quick process now because <laughs> once again, they need to get this money and they need to move it fast. So here's what would happen. They get approved. The state pays the note holder. So that's going to be me 42,000 to bring the loan uh, balance down to the present value. And as you can see, that negative equity just disappeared. So it's great government program for the, the, a uh, homeowner, and that's really who these government programs are for. These programs are not meant to enrich the investors. They're meant to help the homeowners. But you can see as a note holder, if you know these programs, you can absolutely create a win-win scenario for you and the borrower. And once again, Florida has to spend the money. So it's not like you're taking advantage of, of some program. The money has already been allocated. It needs to be spent. And they do want to help people stay in their home. I mean, think about this homeowner living there. Are they relieved now? Are they more incentivized to stay in that neighborhood and continue to make the payment? Has a huge burden been lifted from them that they've been thinking of 24-7? You know, uh, absolutely. And, and what's funny about this deal, Kevin, now, so I'm going to recap this a little bit because I, cause I hadn't seen this case study. You, mm -hmm. You've done a lot of these, and I had even seen this one. So this was this was a new deal. The note buyer paid fifty nine thousand two hundred dollars for a note. Right. The customer owed one hundred and sixteen. Mm -hmm. So they bought it at almost fifty cents on the dollar. Right. Okay. A little, little over that. And but they knew they knew when they bought it that the loan was paying, but the, the borrower owed more than the house was worth. They knew that. Absolutely. They knew that the borrower didn't even know hardest-hit funds existed. Exactly. Okay? So they're buying it, and they're thinking, man, that's a good deal. I'm in a safe zone. The house is worth 74 uh, But, you know, God forbid something go wrong here. You know, I'd be safe if they stop paying, but they've been paying, and what they don't know is I'm going to call them up with the most phenomenal Christmas present they could ever dream up. <laughs> so they get their servicer to call them up and say, hey, there's a program that you probably don't know exists, but it does, and and this program is willing to reduce, pay the, the mortgage company $42,000 because you owe more than the property is currently worth. And then, so remember, the guy bought the note at a discount, <laughs> so he's got $59,200 invested. He gets a check from hardest hit funds for $42,000, leaving his remaining investment in the note of $17,200, and the borrower owes $74,000 to him. 
Kevin, when you put that bad boy in your calculator, it's uh, you know, it's it's the yields enough, right? <laughs> yeah, we I, I didn't run that one through the calculator because I think we can all do do the math here. If you've got seventeen thousand two hundred dollars in an investment, any kind of investment, and it's kicking off to you. $965 a month passive income for 309 months, I think you're making more than 17 too, right? Oh <laughs> Not many gosh. months have to go by before you get your capital investment back. And as you said, all those back end payments are free at that point in time with no hassles of being a, a, a landlord. Yeah, it's a, it's just, it's such a winner. It's, it's, and, and it's a winner for the borrower. You know, it's just a program the bar didn't even know existed. Right. And we're going, well, why didn't the more, the other servicer – we don't know why they don't do it, but they don't do it. You're absolutely right. This is not um, something that is uh, – this is – well, let me rephrase that. This is a program banks could ap absolutely do. Banks could go to their borrowers, and, and banks could say, hey, you can apply for this program. So it's open, really. It's open to anybody. Uh, in the states that 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 allows this, and it's just incredible once again where people don't know about it, and banks don't care today. Unfortunately, it's just banks look at these notes completely different. You know, Eddie, if, if on this note you look at that note, it's my note. You're going to work that note out. But when you're a bank and you've got this one and you've got a gazillion other ones. You don't have the personnel and, and all that to, to focus on these things. So th it just doesn't work out where we do have their best interest at, at heart in this. And it, it does. It absolutely created a win-win scenario because you can imagine the person who lived in that home, they are just relieved of the fact now that they just uh, owe what's left on that note and they're no longer upside down. Oh, so Kevin, you know, uh, it's not uncommon when you and I do little case studies like this that I pull out my old HP 12C calculator and I, hold, and, I hold, and I hold it in my hand while we're sitting there doing it, and I happen to do that on this deal. I think I did earlier. Is it 60-something? I can't remember. It's 67, 67.3%. Oh. Essentially, interest on my investment per year. So per if you year. took seven, so think of it in terms of this, Kevin. If I made you a private loan, and I'm not, I don't even think I could legally do this. <laughs> be no way you could. Usury, right? But if let's just say that, that the, there wasn't a usury law, and that I you would you would agree to it, which I don't think you would. If I made you a private loan for seventeen thousand two hundred dollars, and you paid me back nine sixty five per month for 209 months, the interest rate on the note would be 67% per year. Wow. So the, one, one disclaimer Kevin and I certainly want to do, we're not saying every hardest hit funds story is this phenomenal because it's a good story, right? Mm -hmm. But it's darn sure ain't the only one we've seen like it. We've seen a bunch of them like it. And here's what I would say, Kevin. There's nothing magic about this except this guy knew how to seize the opportunity because he knew it existed. No question. That's that's as simple as it gets. I mean, there's when you tell the story, it's like it's a pretty simple story, right? It's it's just it's it's it is it, that he he knew that he could do it. This was a this was a guy that is one of our students. And he just recognized what could happen. And um, you know, the, these are there's so many things like this that are out there. And like I said, I'm not saying that every hardest hit fun story is this terrific, but there are a bunch of terrific ones. And uh, so we're saying, um, uh, what, what's the disclaimer they always do? And uh, th these these results aren't ordinary or something like that or something yeah, right, kind right. Of yeah these are FTC you know so I'm going to say that this is not ordinary this is extraordinary but we got a bunch of extraordinary stories we do and and you know what Eddie the reality of it is too along that same same concept here was this still a good deal without the hardest hit fund Heck yeah, it was. The guy I mean, bought a note for fifty nine thousand two hundred dollars, and he was owed back one hundred and sixteen thousand. Right. 
So even if they didn't get hardest hit funds, learning to buy right is the way to do it. But when you start to learn to target these things, you know, why not uh, uh, look at uh, some of these states that offer these programs and say, look, it's good enough as it is if I just bought it. But we add this uh, this factor here that uh, we're going to get paid out on this. And that's what made that yield go from, uh, you know, just all the way to 60, whatever you said, 60 something percent per year. It just made it crazy. But uh Look, the money is out there. In fact, the last one, and, and again, Florida is not the only one that does this, but Florida, the last time I checked, still has, Eddie, a half a billion dollars, with a B, half a billion dollars left. They've got to spend. Well, there's, there's just no doubt that that I, I can't believe there's so much money that essentially ends up in a note buyer's hands that people don't even know to utilize I'm just shocked and because you and I Kevin we've stood on top of the rooftop and and yelled hey, this is man look at this but it is still just absolutely underutilized and uh, and you know it's it's uh, you know Kevin we appreciate you're doing the research but anybody could go do it but the thing is you went and did it you went and learned you went and figured it out and now we're able to help people do this otherwise I mean we realize that there's nothing there's no research that we do that somebody else couldn't go do on their own but but we're we can shortcut it from them and help them do it so anyway we thought this would be a fun little case study to do today and show you guys uh, what what we see uh, as some niches and opportunities and we'll have a lot of different case studies that we'll utilize over time and show you guys but uh, we just thought it would be fun to show you this uh, Florida asset that was a performing note that was eligible for the hardest hit funds because the borrower owed more than the property was worth. The guy ended up, after he got the money from hardest hit funds, with about a $17,200 remaining investment to collect back almost $1,000 a month for over 300 months. And as we, we laughed and said, the interest per year, laughed because it's so phenomenally good, the interest per year on this 17000 would l literally equal like 67%. What else, Mr. Kevin? That's all we have for uh, for today, but uh, that's uh, that's a good one, and we have uh, plenty more coming uh, coming your way. Thanks, Kevin. We appreciate your research on this and putting this together. You did a really good job of kind of laying it out where it's easy to follow, and, and that's always helpful, and uh, we'll catch you next time. All right. My pleasure.